Hello my lovelies, I hope you're all doing well and are excited for this video today. Continuing my best and worst of 2023 series, today we are going to be ranking 10 worst Thai BL actors of 2023. My criteria for including people in this list today are following. Actors who weren't able to show any emotional range, actors who lacked chemistry with their partner, overacting or underacting, and lastly actors who looked uncomfortable working with their male counterparts. So with that said, let's see who stands at number 10 on my list. I must confess, I never thought that Om will ever be on my worst actor list, but after giving us back-to-back -back flops last year, he has appeared in only one series this year which is Bake Me Please and he's still playing the same kind of character he played in Until We Meet Again in 2019. His character Shin in Bake Me Please is just a different version of Dean from Until We Meet Again, Kim from Oh My Sunshine Night and Mum from 609 Bedtime Story. Forget about emotional range, this man prefers to take characters which don't require him to speak much, so we never get to properly judge his dialogue delivery. His one facial expression that makes him look mysterious and handsome is not cutting it anymore for me and I think it's time we all collectively acknowledge the fact that this man doesn't know how to do diverse roles. So Om and his stiff but handsome face are standing at number 10 on my list. The reason Chimon is standing at number 9 on my worst Thai BL actor list is not because he's a bad actor. It's because of two reasons. The first is inconsistency. After giving us a good performance with Pert in Never Let Me Go, he raised the audience expectations and all of us were so excited to see him and Pert together in their own series with such a good concept. But he ruined the whole show with his inconsistent acting and chemistry with Perth. The second reason is inability to adapt. He couldn't deliver the same level of acting with Perth as he did in his straight dramas. He looked extremely uncomfortable doing intimate scenes, ruining the whole vibe of the show. He couldn't adapt to the requirements of his role in Dangerous Romance and that is why he is one of the worst actors for 2023 for me. Mark appeared in four BLs this year, Dangerous Romance, R Sky 2, Past Sanger and Chains of Heart. And despite getting so many opportunities to improve his acting, he couldn't deliver in any of his roles. He lacks depth when it comes to acting, he's not a main lead material, neither visually nor skill-wise. He always has an annoyed expression on his face and I have literally never seen him in a character who is not angry or resentful. Overall, he's pretty unremarkable, nothing charismatic or memorable about his acting or visuals. Therefore, one expression mark is number 8 on my list. Nat is standing quite proudly I must say at number 7 on my list. And why is Nat standing so proudly? I don't know because my feathers would be a tiny bit ruffled when I realized that the CGI tiger and the tiny chihuahua that's constantly stuck to me like glue is far better at acting than me. Anywho, Nat definitely struggles from the short king syndrome and thinks that acting cute is enough to sell his role as Kun Diao in Naughty Babe and he doesn't have to do any real acting. Unfortunately, he is very wrong and relying on being cute and tiny has really hindered his emotional range as an actor and he's not able to show any depth to his character. As someone pointed out earlier in my video, Nat is really not the worst actor. Maybe he needs to take up roles that are a bit more mature, a bit more forward and dominant because I really liked him in Why Destiny and he was not at all irritating like he was in Naughty Babe. So maybe that is something to think about. We all like Ping but he is unfortunately number 6 on my list because he really just knows how to act dumb and cute and so whatever role he takes up he automatically changes the character to suit his acting style which is acting like the character is naive, a little bit of a dimwit and yet very very endearing. So in future if he takes up a mafia role that mafia will be cute and dumb, if he takes up a teacher role that teacher would be naive and clumsy, if he takes up a lawyer role that lawyer would be poor because he keeps losing all the cases because of his dumbness but everyone still loves him. So Ping overall is a cutie pie but let's be honest here he doesn't know the A of acting. 
Another cutie that is number 5 on my list and a long lost brother of Ping is Mr. Yim who is adorable but still very very new to acting and has a long way to go before he could be considered a decent actor. People keep saying that he was done dirty by the director of Middleman's love series Chi Win. And yes, I do agree to a certain degree he was done dirty by Chi Win but the fault does not completely rest on Chi Win's shoulders. Because we have seen cringe characters like Jade done before and they were done very well by other actors. For example, Sang in Secret Crush on You completely devoured his character who was made to be cringe. The actor who played Green in Together also completely nailed his character which was made to be annoying and cringe. Bomb who played Thee in I Will Knock You also had to play a cringy comedy character and he really did a good job of it. So it is ultimately the actor's job to sell his character. I think Jade should have remained with Tommy. He would have ate the character and left no crumbs. But Yim is still a rookie actor and could not understand the essence of this character. He crushed the character and made it aggravating and obnoxious rather than pitiful and comedic. I think it's GMMTV's fault for putting a heavy series like Never Let Me Go on Fuwen's weak and fragile shoulders. Sitting rather unfazed at number 4 is Fu Win who appeared alongside his partner Pond in Never Let Me Go and Our Sky 2. Fu Win unfortunately has all the classic bad actor traits like overacting, he delivers his lines in a very over-exaggerated and unnatural way. He's alright in light-hearted scenes but he has no emotional depth and isn't able to do well in scenes that require him to show any kind of complicated or layered emotion. His voice modulation is not good and he recites his dialogues in a very monotonous way. His mouth also moves in a weird way that makes the scene completely lose any gravity or seriousness. His chemistry with Pond is good but I just think he's not currently a main lead material and needs to go into some acting classes with a certain other GMM TV actor to improve before appearing in main lead roles. Talking about the certain other actor, Dunk is sitting proudly and almost stubbornly as second runner-up on my list. The king of monotony, the king of one facial expression, the king of looking bored and pretty on screen is Mr. Dunk who is in no hurry to improve his acting skills and continues to give us insomnia curing TV shows one after the other. I'm pretty sure Dunk will never realize his faults as an actor and will continue to get main lead roles alongside Jung because PL fangirls generally worship actors who are pretty looking and are almost never bothered about trivial things like acting or on-screen presence. Dunk got the same kind of character in Hidden Agenda as Star in My Mind and was still not able to do a good job of it. I supported the pair in Star in My Mind and watched Hidden Agenda until episode 5. But unfortunately, until Dunk learns to give more than one facial expression and learns to deliver his dialogues in an effective manner, I won't be able to support Jung and Dunk's shows anymore. But to each their own, I guess. And the award for the ugliest crying face goes to Ben Bunyapol. Number 2 on my list is none other than Ben who played the most aggravating, irksome and obnoxious character in 2023 BL history. Not only does Ben does not know how to act, he has this innate ability to appear on screen and provoke violent tendencies in viewers. He loves to act insufferable and childish on screen making viewers want to shatter their television screens into pieces. The most unfair partnership in the history of BL partnerships is Matt and Ben because man has gravitas, he knows how to deliver his role perfectly, he has amazing on-screen presence and he's partnered with someone like Ben who cannot act to save his life. So it's such a pity for fans who want to watch the show for man but also cannot stand to watch Ben, so it's a catch-22 kind of a situation. If the two appear again in a new series, I hope Ben has improved on his craft and can act so that we don't have to cry tears of blood while watching the show. And the award for the worst actor of 2023 goes to none other than Gun Napad. Do you guys know Gun won a Best Actor award recently? Yes, this happened. He did win a Best Actor award and despite his terrible performance as an actor, he keeps getting acting roles 
and not just support roles but main lead roles. He is now set to appear in Luminous Begins as a main lead and is doing support roles in the Hellguard and Red P. Fowl series. You might wonder why he keeps getting acting roles despite sucking massively as an actor. Well, he is the son of a well-known minister in Thailand but please don't quote me on that info. I was given this important piece of info by one of you guys and it definitely solved the mystery in my mind as to how an actor who sucks at his very job can get so many acting roles one after another. For me, even if Gunn improves his acting, he will never be a main lead material because he doesn't have screen presence and he lacks charm that makes viewers want to watch his shows. So these were 10 worst PL actors of 2023 according to me. Most of this video was just banner but take this video as you like and please leave your worst actor list in the comments below. See you soon with a new video. Bye.